Hey there, welcome to episode 103 of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is the 2016 G.I. Joe Convention box set. Now you might be wondering, okay, it's almost 2021, why are you talking about a 2016 uh, box set today? So uh, if you're a regular viewer, um, you know, I, I post videos, I try to do one almost every week, and when I started this channel, I had done some of these videos where I reviewed some of the convention box sets, some of the figure subscription services, um, but I kind of just got away from that because it got to the point where I was getting so much new stuff lately that I, every week I'd have to do new, a new episode just to showcase all my new purchases, and I kind of got away from doing these more focused videos where I'm looking at a particular set of toys. So uh, since it's December, um, all the toys that I'm buying, and I am still buying some toys. I went to uh, my local Toys R Us the other day. We still have those here in Canada. And uh, normally I go and I'm lucky if I find one thing. Uh, I went to Toys R Us like two nights ago and they must have had like 10 things I wanted, which never happens. I had like my arms full and I was, once I saw something else I wanted more, I put something else back because I really just don't have the money to be buying everything I want. I've got a bunch of stuff on pre-order at Big Bad Toy Store, and when those things end up in stock, which could be any day now, it charges my credit card for those, plus I'm doing my Christmas shopping. Um, so yeah, I just can't buy everything I see off the shelf, uh, and I'm not used to going into a store and finding so much stuff I want on a shelf. So I'm still buying new stuff, but um, as I do every year, pretty much um, whatever I buy for myself in December, I like to set aside and I save that for Christmas morning just so it makes my Christmas morning more like it was when I was a kid. I get this big pile of new toys. So since I don't have any new stuff to show you, I can get back to doing these more focused videos. And one last thing before I get into the uh, the box set. Um, if you're a regular viewer, you might know that I was kind of holding off on doing videos for a little while because I ordered the uh, Snake Mountain playset from Super 7, which is part of the Masters of the Universe line. And this is a really big playset. It's the biggest, most expensive toy I've ever bought. And uh, those things started shipping out in like November. And uh, so I kind of thought, you know, I got some notifications saying like, you're going to get your Snake Mountain. Uh, it's going to be around the end of November, maybe the start of December. So I wanted to hold off because I was coming up to my episode 100. And I thought, you know what, I want episode 100 to be special. So I'm going to wait and I'm going to review Snake Mountain. That's it's such a big piece. But uh, it got delayed a little bit. So I thought, well, I'm not going to stop making videos forever until this thing shows up. So I went ahead and I did episode 100 episode 101, 102, and now here I am with 103. I do still intend to review my Steak Mountain when it comes, but I just got a notification this morning that there's been another delay, and they're not actually going to ship any of the Canadian Snake Mountains out until January 17th. So January 17th happens to be my birthday, so it's cool that they're shipping it out on my birthday, but it's not like it's going to get here that day. Um, so I probably won't get it until the end of January or even February, possibly. So it's going to be a while before you get my Snake Mountain video. Um, so yeah, we'll get to that eventually. But for today, we're going to focus on the G.I. Joe convention set. So here is the box. Uh, if you're not familiar, basically... Um, so Hasbro creates G.I. Joe figures. And around 2007, they started what uh, fans have kind of called the modern era of G.I. Joe. Which that term already doesn't work. Because now, today, in 2020, the modern era G.I. Joes are 6-inch figures. Um, so yeah, to call figures from 2007 the modern era doesn't really work anymore. So we'll probably have to come up with a new term for that eventually. But So Hasbro started making these figures. They started out calling it the 25th anniversary. Um, that rolled into the figures related to the movies, Rise of Cobra and uh, Retaliation. Uh, and then after a while, G.I. Joe just kind of fizzled out at retail. Um, I don't know if the figures just weren't selling. Um... But for a while, the only way you could really get new figures was through the G.I. Joe Collectors Club. So they would make officially licensed figures. Hasbro would give them the uh, access to their molds and stuff so they could mix and match parts and repaint existing figures. And they gave us a ton of cool figures. The problem is the Collectors Club figures were way more expensive than the kind of figures you would buy at retail. But they were no better in quality or accessories and things of that nature. So a figure that would normally cost you say 20 bucks at uh, Walmart was costing you 50, 60 with the shipping to get from the Collector's Club. So every year, the Collector's Club would put on a G.I. Joe convention, the Joe Con, 
and it would be in a different city every year. Uh, the 2016 one happened to take place in Loveland, Colorado from June 16th to 19th. It says right here on the box. And uh, so the theme that year was Sky Patrol. So every year at the convention, they would release a box set of 15 exclusive figures as well as a bunch of other convention exclusive figures. So usually a figure with a vehicle, a little three pack of trooper figures. Um, so I'm going to talk about all that stuff in this video. First, we're going to go through the box set and then we're going to look at some of the other figures that were available at the uh, 2016 convention. So first, I just want to talk a little bit about Sky Patrol. So it was a sub team of G.I. Joe. Uh, when G.I. Joe started, and I was there from the beginning collecting G.I. Joe figures in, like, 1982, um, the first sub-team was, like, Tiger Force, I think, was probably officially the first one, where it was, like, this. these guys were G.I. Joes, but they all had tiger-striped matching outfits, and they were kind of a little subset of G.I. Joe. Um, near the, the last few years of G.I. Joes, like, into the 90s, there was a ton of sub-teams, whether it was Eco Force or the Drug Elimination Force or Sky Patrol or Ninja Force. There was a whole bunch. And, uh, unfortunately, the year I stopped buying G.I. Joe's was 1990, um, and I only bought one figure from the 1990 set of figures. It's kind of weird. I don't really know what specifically kind of made me and my brother move on, but me and my brother Doug collected G.I. Joe's together. So between the two of us, we would get everything every year. Maybe not all the vehicles, but we would definitely get all the single-carded figures. And in 1989, we got every figure. And then in 1990, we bought one each. I bought Rampart, he bought Undertow, and that was it. That was the last G.I. Joe I got for years. I didn't get another G.I. Joe until like 2002 or something when G.I. Joe kind of came back on the scene. So, yeah, I'm not sure why, but 1990, we just kind of outgrew it. Um, and so we stopped collecting G.I. Joe's. Now, Sky Patrol was introduced in 1990. So all the characters in this box set are based on figures from like 1990, 1991. And I have no attachment to any of those characters. They weren't featured in the G.I. Joe cartoon. I don't know if they appeared in the G.I. Joe comic book. I don't recall. Um, I have all the G.I. Joe comic books now. I had to go back and get them. But me and my brother collected the G.I. Joe comic book as a kid. But uh, we stopped collecting at issue 100. Uh, right around the same time we got bored of the toys. You know, the cartoon was off the air. We stopped reading the comic book. So all these characters I have, I have zero attachment to. So when they announced that Sky Patrol was going to be the theme of the 2016 set, it was one of those ones where it was a little hard to get excited for because, sure, it was some new characters, um, and it's exciting to get new guys instead of just repaints of Duke and Snake Eyes. But, uh, you know, I didn't really care about these characters. And these sets are really expensive, especially when you don't attend the convention. You have to pay for the shipping, plus I'm in Canada, so there's, uh, you know, a big markup for the Canadian dollar. And these things would cost me, like... 500 bucks or something so to shell out 500 bucks to get a set with a bunch of characters that you don't really care about it's a big ask the thing is there's always at least a couple of cool figures in these sets like maybe i didn't care about any of the gi joe characters specifically but maybe there's one or two cool cobra troopers and if i wanted to just buy those cobra troopers on ebay and not buy the whole set people would mark up the figures quite substantially to buy them individually and if it was an in-demand figure um, it could be, it could sell for like 200 bucks just on its own. So after 2012, I bought every single set until they stopped making them. I didn't love every single set. Um, and I always questioned like, should I really be spending the money on this? But I knew I would want at least one or two figures. I'm like, those two figures are going to cost me at least 200 bucks. So I might as well get 15 figures for the 300 or for the 500 or and uh, yeah, so that was the case with this one. There's a couple cool figures in here. It's not my favorite set by any means, but um, yeah, we'll take a look at it. So again, here's the box. Nothing super fancy on there, just the Sky Patrol logo. The back, it's just got this kind of textured black box. You pop it open. As with all these sets, you get the foam insert where all the characters were. Underneath is where all the file cards and accessories would be. Uh, every year there's a different little pin for the set. So this one here has got the little, it says Loveland, Colorado. It's got the little G.I. Joe logo. You also get this uh, little folder. Now inside the folder, it had a comic book that featured the characters inside of the, the box set. And those were always pretty cool because even if it was a character that I didn't particularly know much about, the comic book helped flesh them out and it made you kind of appreciate the, the characters more. So I really like that they put those comic books in there. 
I don't have the comic book to show you because I would I don't leave the comic books in these boxes. These boxes go under my stairs when I'm done with looking at it. Whereas my comic books, I have a pretty big comic collection already. So I take the comic out and I put it in a bag and board and it's in my comic book collection. But anyway, also in the folder you get your little certificate of authenticity. And yeah, nothing too exciting there. But uh, yeah, so that's the box. And uh, yeah, let's move on and we'll take a look at the individual figures. So the first figure we're going to look at is Drop Zone. So this is one of the G.I. Joe members of Sky Patrol. This is version 2. So this is only the second version of this character. Um, and they haven't made any sense. So there's still only two versions of this character ever. As I said earlier, uh, Sky Patrol was introduced in 1990. So the original one came out in 1990. Uh, I didn't have any of those original Sky Patrol figures. But an interesting thing that Hasbro did with Sky Patrol is for all these G.I. Joe characters, so these guys were heroic characters, but they took existing bodies from Cobra Troopers and then they just gave them new heads. So the 1990 uh, drop zone figure, they took the Cobra Strato Viper. So the Strato Viper is already a pilot, so his outfit, I guess, kind of made sense for another pilot. So they just took the Strato Viper, repainted it, and plopped on a brand new head for him. And that was Drop Zone. So you would suspect for this version of Drop Zone, they would maybe do the same thing because they already had an updated version of the Strato Viper in the modern line. But that's not quite what they did here. So first, let's take a closer look at the figure. So you'll see Drop Zone and all the other G.I. Joe characters in the box that have these kind of reflective chrome bases, which is kind of cool. It distinguishes them from every other G.I. Joe in your collection. Um, and yeah, so here you see him. He's got this kind of kind of an odd color scheme with the two different browns and then some gray. He's a little bland looking as far as G.I. Joes go. And then he's got this helmet, which it doesn't really look like the helmet on the vintage figure. And I don't particularly love this helmet. It looks a little odd like it looks like a motorcycle helmet as opposed to anything a pilot would wear and i don't think this helmet was new for the set uh, i can't remember where it originally appeared but i think this is just a helmet that already existed that the club just repurposed for this drop zone figure so basically what we've got here is they did take parts of the modern strato viper so here you'll see the modern strato viper so with his legs he's got these kind of unique shin guards um, and you can see it's a little hard to see because the black on the gray but he's got this kind of like i don't know it almost looks like chaps that come up really high so this guy has got the uh the same lower legs but then he has a uh, the upper legs are different so he doesn't have those same uh, kind of chaps at the top and also his arms are different so here you can see him, he's got the, like the pouch on the side and the wristband, whereas he does not. No pouch, no wristband, it's completely different. So this uh, this drop zone figure, he's made out of uh, so parts of the Strato Viper, but he's also got some uh, flint pieces from the uh, one of the G.I. Joe Retaliation flints. And he's also got the arms uh, are from a Storm Shadow from G.I. Joe Retaliation. So all he's got from the Strato Viper are the lower legs and the web gear, which is probably the most recognizable piece. So this here is the same as what the Strato Viper has. This kind of uh, ill-fitting, kind of awkward web gear. And uh, yeah, you'll notice on him, he's got a hole in his because they, for whatever reason, they took off the, uh, the holstered pistol. That's not something that just fell off. They just didn't include it here. So that's a little odd that you've got that hole there. And then for the head, pop that off. So I was trying to remember where this head originated from, and I thought for sure it was flint, because um, it looks like flint. But then I went and looked at all my flint figures, and I couldn't find a head that matched up with this. And uh, so, yeah, after some digging, I eventually realized that this head first appeared on uh, Law. So this is the G.I. Joe, like, MP. So this figure came out a couple of years earlier, and that's the head that they reused 
for uh, for drop zone. Now, this head doesn't necessarily scream law to me. So if I put this on my shelf and displayed him like this, if anything, I would think he looks like Flint. So I am glad that he has a full helmet that I can cover over his face. That way, it doesn't really matter um, that he shares a face with another GI Joe character. I like my GI Joes to all look unique. Um, I'm really not a fan of when they reuse heads over and over and over again. So even back in 1990, even though they reused all the bodies, each of the Sky Patrol members had a brand new sculpted head. Um, but I do understand why the club didn't go that route. Um, because these guys do have full headed helmets, you know, that covers the entire head. And they probably know that a lot of people are going to display them that way. It's really not worth the, uh, the tooling dollars to pay for a new sculpted head. So I'm fine with that. So this figure's okay, but you can probably see why he's not my favorite and why he's probably nobody's favorite G.I. Joe. Back in the day, he was made up mostly of reused parts. His colors are kind of bland. He wasn't really featured in any G.I. Joe media, so it's kind of hard to get attached to him. But just strictly on his merits as an action figure, he's all right. Now, I'm not going to get into the posability of all these guys. These all have the standard articulation you'd expect from the modern G.I. Joes. Which is to say, it's not always good. Like, these figures are not really ideal for playing with. I think the modern Joes are definitely a step up as far as sculpting, uh, you know, compared to the toys of the 80s and 90s. But uh, they are a little more awkward. If I was a kid, I don't think I'd have as much fun with these because they're not as poseable. They drop their weapons a lot more. Um, they just have a lot of pieces that you can lose. But as a display piece, I think he looks pretty nice. Uh, the last thing I should talk about here is his backpack. So you see here he's got uh, this jetpack, these wings. When you pull one out, they both come out. Now this has been reused a couple of times. Um, I think it might have first appeared as part of the Retaliation movie line. I actually can't recall. Um, I know it came with the uh, like barrel roll from the figure subscription service. Anyway, it's a cool little glider, and it definitely adds some value to to this figure. Uh, he's also got a, I'm not a gun expert, I'll just call that a machine gun. I don't know what kind of gun it is. Um, you know, just cast in brown plastic. There's no painted detail or anything on his weapons, which is pretty standard for G.I. Joe figures. All in all, not too bad. So there you go, let's drop zone. So next up, we're gonna take a look at Skydive. Now this is Skydive version three. So there actually was another version of Skydive uh, in between this one and the original from 1990. Now, the uh, the 1990 version, uh, that's the figure that inspired this one. So, based on his original look. And just like with Drop Zone, they took an existing Cobra Trooper body and they put a new head on it. So, another Cobra like pilot type character was the Gyro Viper. So, they took the Cobra Gyro Viper and they placed a new mustachioed head on there. And that's how you got Skydive. Now, unfortunately, they couldn't do the same thing in the modern era because they never got around to making a modern Gyro Viper. So that was the base of the figure, so they had to go a different route. So before I get into the parts, um, I do want to bring out version 2 of Skydive. And this one's kind of weird. This one came out in 2011, and it's a nice figure. Like, it's a very detailed figure. But you can see it looks nothing like Skydive. It's basically just skydive in name only. This came out as part of the uh, like Pursuit of Cobra line, which was, it's a fan favorite line. It's very detailed. You can see the ton of detail and ton of accessories he's got here. He's got this backpack with the little remote action. You hit the button on there. The wings pop out. But yeah, the color design looks nothing like the original skydive. You can actually take this helmet off, but underneath he's just got a masked head so you can't recognize him he doesn't have his familiar mustache or anything so yeah this is skydive but i think if you were a skydive fan when you were a kid and you wanted an updated skydive figure as cool as this figure might be uh you know just as its own thing i don't think you would have been very satisfied with this being an update of your like childhood favorite so this figure here finally gives us the skydive that probably most people would have wanted so this is a nice looking figure and I think it uh, it looks like Skydive. It captures the original 1990 toy pretty well, even without the gyro viper parts. 
One thing I'll tell you right off the bat that's very frustrating with this figure is the holes on his feet do not agree with this stand. He is, uh, especially this foot here, it just doesn't take, he's very wobbly. So that's kind of annoying when you pay big bucks for a figure and they can't even figure out something like the holes on his feet. And it also doesn't help that these guys all have big backpacks that really make them a little uh, topsy-turvy here. So this guy has the same style backpack. It's just painted differently. So this is the same thing that we saw with Drop Zone. And it makes sense for the Sky Patrol to have a consistent, oh, there he goes again, a consistent uh, type of backpack there. And for accessories here, he's got, got this gun here. He's got a removable helmet. Although it doesn't want to come off. Yeah, the helmet does come off. It's I got to struggle with it, and I really don't want to scuff his paint or anything, so I'm just going to leave it. Uh, and then he does also have these removable goggles, which just sit on top of his helmet there to help recreate the look of the original figure. Now, uh, I guess I should mention, too, about accessories. So I'm going to show you what accessories I have these guys displayed with. Um, that's not to say that's all the accessories in the set. In fact, I can pretty much guarantee you it's not. He probably came with an extra pistol and another knife. Um, I don't know. The, uh, the box sets usually come with quite a bit of accessories, more than the figures can actually hold on to. And I just kind of have all those accessories tucked away in a box. So uh, I'm not going to bother to haul all that stuff out. I don't even remember exactly who goes with what but uh, just know that if you were to buy this set on like eBay or something you'd probably get more accessories than what you're gonna see in this video so as for the build of this figure so from the neck down they took a Cobra Trooper and repurposed it just like the original one but instead of a gyro Viper we've got the data Viper which is this big crazy figure so this was also out um, during like the pursuit of Cobra days when Hasbro was getting pretty crazy with the detail. This is a really neat figure uh, You can see there's a lot going on with this guy, but there's almost there's too much going on with this guy every time I touch him He falls apart um, He's got this big He doesn't stand up very well either which Makes sense why skydive falls over if they're made of the same thing Get this helmet you take off you take this big crazy backpack with all these attachments off and you see once you get rid of all the craziness he's got a pretty standard like jumpsuit on underneath there and so it would make sense that they would reuse that for one of their pilot characters so you can see how this is just a repaint of the data viper and then for head they used mutt so the G.I. Joe dog handler, who's uh, well known for his uh, m his mustache. So yeah, it makes sense that they would reuse that for him. He's got the kind of scowl with the open mouth. So that's a reuse that totally makes sense to me. I wouldn't have needed them to spend money to retool a new head for this guy because I don't think they look, you know, the exact same because they have different color hair. And also, they both wear helmets and stuff, which helps differentiate them as well. So I'm totally fine with the choice of this character. I think the parts are actually really great and make for a really cool figure. I love the backpack. I love the body. I love the head. The only problem is, is just the functionality of him. The fact that he won't stand up and the fact that his backpack, you know, just helps to make him fall over very easily. It's a little frustrating. But uh, just looks-wise, once you do get him... Stand in there and you put him in your display, he makes for a pretty cool figure. So there you go, that's Skydive version 3. So next up, we've got Airwave version 2. So again, this is the only, only the second version of Airwave ever to be released. The first version came out in 1990, along with the other guys. And just like the other two guys I showed you, the original uh, Airwave, he had a Cobra Trooper body from the neck down, and then he had a brand new head sculpted. So... Back in 1990, the body they used was the Cobra Motor Viper. And, uh, yeah. So, the Motor Viper, they did do a Motor Viper in the modern era, but he was part of the movie line, and he didn't quite look like the classic version here. So, here is the Cobra Motor Viper from the movie line. So, it's a pretty cool figure, and I figure they could have just 
taken this body and reused it. That would be true to the original 1990 figure, but that's not what they did. All they really reused from the Motor Viper is the, the web gear. So that removable vest. So you see it's got those kind of like two pipes that come around from the back onto the front. It's got the kind of the two pipes that go over each shoulder. So that's the only part that they reused from Motor Viper. Otherwise, we can get rid of him. What's kind of odd is the base of this guy's body with the little holster on his legs. You get these attachments here on his side of his uh, legs here and all this extra padding on his arms. So all that actually comes from the 2011 uh, skydive that I showed you earlier. So I don't know why they didn't use this skydive body for the modern skydive, but uh, that's not what they just decided to do. So it's a little hard to tell because he's got all this big bulky web gear on him. But if you look at his uh, legs, you see he's got the, uh, the holster here. He's got the kind of wrinkled pants. He's got this uh, kind of textured thing on the side of his legs. And that's, uh, that's exactly what you get with this guy. Same as the arms. So he's got the uh, the elbow pad. He's got those kind of that weird triple padding on the shoulder. Same thing you're seeing here. So everything about this guy from the neck down is a reuse of this skydive. And then he's got the motor viper vest. And then for a head, so you'll see he's got the same helmet as Drop Zone, but they're just painted with different color visors but they're the same kind of silvery color. So these guys kind of look like they definitely belong to the same unit. Now underneath his helmet, he's got this head. And if it looks familiar, and it definitely should if you're a GI Joe collector, cause they used this head, like I wanna say dozens of times. And it kind of makes sense. Like it's a pretty, you know, generic looking head. You know, that's a pretty, I'll just, I'll call it a neutral haircut. You know, he doesn't have any mustaches or any scars or anything really defining. So I guess it makes sense that they would reuse this one over and over again. The first time we got it was on a Dusty. So like here's a, here's a Dusty with that head. And then I won't bring out all the other examples, um, but like here is Spearhead, for example. Take off Spearhead's helmet and again, that same, same head underneath. And then even uh, Bullhorn here, the other character. It helps that he's got darker hair, whereas the other three guys almost have the same hair color. But that, it, that is the same head, just over and over and over again. So yeah, and this is just the, the tip of the iceberg. There's quite a few other characters with, uh, with this head. Now, uh, otherwise, he's got... Uh, Silver machine gun. He's got a little uh, little brown phone or walkie-talkie in his hand there. Uh, he's got the little removable pistol and the holster on the back. And then there you see he's just got a parachute pack. So unlike the other two guys, he does not have a like glider with re with uh, with retractable wings or anything like that. So you know that's that's kind of a shame that he's missing that accessory. But uh, I like the look of this figure. Again, I can't imagine he'd be anybody's favorite G.I. Joe. He's just made up completely of reused parts. His head is, you know, we've seen it on a dozen other guys. His outfit is just shades of brown. It's all kind of bland. But that doesn't mean it's bad. I think uh, sometimes I like the kind of bland colors as it makes him seem a little more realistic. I could see this guy being a real soldier as opposed to, you know, this crazy blue camo or even uh, spearheads bright orange so yeah i like the look of airwave uh one last thing to mention about him i guess before we move on is you'll notice on his uh his base his name is cliff airwave mewitt sometimes hasbro does that when they have lost the rights to the name airwave so uh, i don't know exactly how it works but i guess they can't just call him outright airwave um so they have to kind of put his uh his code name in quotes between his real name and I guess that gets them around the copyright issue or trademark issue whatever so there you go that is uh airwave version two so next up we have static line and this is static line version two version one came out in 1990 uh so the original just like the other guys he was reused parts from the neck down and then he had a new head now, unlike the other guys, though, they didn't use a Cobra body. 
they actually had a G.I. Joe body, so they took the character of Backstop, reused that for the original static line with a newly sculpted head. So what we've got here, um, they had to get a little more creative because we don't have Backstop in the modern era, so they couldn't use that. Um, so his, his body is made up of a bunch of parts, and I'm not going to haul them out um, because he's made up of three different guys. Um, he's got Retaliation Firefly, so Firefly from the live-action movie. He's got his torso. Then he's got Lift Ticket Arms. So Lift Ticket is a, uh, a G.I. Joe pilot. And then he's got the Cobra Shock Trooper legs. So he's got uh, yeah, a bunch of different parts there. But this is the first time in this set that we've got a newly sculpted head. So let's uh, just kind of take that in for a second. Because it's, uh, it's a pretty cool head. Like the helmet is pretty unique. Just how it fits him. It's got the visor there. The like kind of extra long chin attachment. Overall, it's, it's a pretty cool look. I like it. However, one thing I do not like is that the helmet is attached to the head. And this seemed to be something that the club started doing with a lot more frequency in the later years. Because um, what you'd expect is most G.I. Joes have removable helmets that I would have expected, you know, maybe they'd even reuse a different, you know, a head that we already had, but they would create a new helmet that could slide over that head. Um, but they didn't do that. Instead, you've got the head sculpted attached to the helmet which is kind of a bummer. This does not come off. As you can see, it's all just one piece. So it looks fine. And it's not that big a deal because I don't need everybody's helmet to come off. If I was a kid and I had this and I played with them, I'd probably be a little more annoyed because I liked how all their helmets came off when I was a kid. But just as a display piece, it ultimately doesn't bother me all that much. And uh, you can kind of tell that when the club did invest the money to create a new head like this, you knew they wanted to reuse it. Because it did cost, you know, it cost the money, obviously, to put the tooling dollars in to create a newly sculpted piece. So almost every time you saw a new piece, you could kind of guess, like, what are they going to reuse that for? And uh, they reused that, I think it was the following year. Um, and you'll see that here. They reused it to create Backstop. So the original static line was based on the Backstop figure, which came up before him. This time around, they created Static Line, and then they made Backstop out of him. And Backstop, you'll see, it's a little hard to tell maybe that they share the same head because, you know, they're different races and all that sort of stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's definitely the same head that they just reused there. And it makes sense because it's it looks pretty accurate to the original Backstop figure and his helmet, but it also matches up with Static Line. So I don't hate the, uh, the cost-saving measure. I like both of these figures. I'm glad we got them both. But we'll get rid of him because we didn't get him until a year later. And we'll just focus on Static Line for now. So the parts come together pretty good. Like he's maybe a little lopsided, a little gangly looking there in the torso. Um, but that's kind of commonplace with the modern era figures. There was a lot of mixing and matching of parts. Not everything always fit together perfect. I think he looks pretty good. I like the combination of the white and the blue, the kind of like sweater that he's wearing, that textured sweater there looks pretty cool. And for backpack, just like the other guys, he's got this same uh, jetpack that we saw. I know I said it came with barrel roll, but I, if memory serves, I think the first time we got this was from the G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra Hawk figure. I think so. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's the first time we saw this. So the, the club is definitely getting its uh, its use out of it for this set because we've seen it three times now already. But it's all in, it's in different co colors for each guy. Like even if we bring uh, Skydive back out here. So you can see they're both blue and silver, but they didn't just cheap out and give them the exact same backpack. They did paint it differently for each guy, so that's pretty cool. So otherwise, I don't know if I have a whole lot more to say about Static Line, but uh, yeah, he's one of my favorite figures from the set just because of the unique head sculpt there. So there you go, Static Line version 2. Okay, so next up we're going to talk about Airborne, which is this guy here. But before we do that, I'm going to tell you to basically just ignore everything I just told you about the build of this figure, because... 
as I was holding it up to the camera and I was telling you that he's made with the Cobra Shock Trooper legs, I was looking at him like, those aren't the Cobra Shock Trooper legs. Uh, the thing is, I have some notes here beside me uh, about what parts are made up of what guy. And I was actually reading you what I had written for Airborne for Static Line. So Static Line, he is a mishmash of parts. So he's got a Pursuit of Cobra beachhead torso with this kind of armored bit here. Then the arms are from a Resolute Cobra Trooper, and the uh, legs are actually from Duke, which makes a lot more sense. So that's the build of this figure. And everything I told you about him previously is actually what is true of Airborne. So I mentioned to you about how he had uh, lift ticket parts, and so you'll see here's lift ticket, one of the original G.I. Joe pilots, and he's got these very uh, recognizable kind of checkered shoulder pads. So that's what you see here on Airborne. The the Cobra Shock Trooper, which is kind of like a... It was a really well-sculpted, detailed kind of Cobra Urban Trooper. Um, so these pant legs here, you can see with all the various wrinkles. Nothing too like elaborate or fancy. Just kind of like a baggy pants with some knee pads and some boots. Those are definitely the Shock Trooper legs. Which is why, you know, as I was telling you that these were Shock Trooper legs, I was like, that's definitely not right. So... There you go. Shock Trooper legs, lift ticket arms. He's got Firefly's torso um, from the movie. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Now, uh, this is a little confusing. This character's name is Airborne, but he's not the, uh, the G.I. Joe character Airborne that most people think of when they think Airborne. Uh, Airborne uh, was originally a character that came out in 1983, I want to say. One of the very original Joes. Uh, the first, like, G.I. Joe paratrooper. And uh, he was Native American, I believe. Um, but, yeah, so this is a total different character. So this guy here, Airborne, the first one came out, version 1, in 1990. And basically what they did is they took a lift ticket body and put a new head on him, and that's how they created Airborne. Um, but because of the naming conventions, when Hasbro loses the rights to a character's name... Um, this guy, if you try to follow, like the website yojo.com, which is what most people use as reference material, that's what I use to remind myself what parts these figures are made up of and stuff, it gets a little confusing what they call Airborne version 1 and version 2 and version 3, because it's basically two different guys sharing a name and they kind of get swapped around, and then the original Airborne, they changed his name to Sergeant Airborne, so it's, it really is kind of a confusing mess, but if you just want to Stick to this particular character. So you can see here, his name is Robert Six. The code name is Airborne. This is version two of Robert Six. Um, and it's the only version of him that exists other than the original. So there was that 1990 original Sky Patrol version of Airborne slash Robert Six. And here is version two. Now I think on if you go to yojo.com, this is technically labeled as Airborne version three. But like I said, if we're just speaking about the character of Robert Six, version two okay now similar to uh static line the collector's club sculpted a brand new head for airborne and it's a decent head but it's got the same issue the helmet is not removable this is just part of the sculpt so again it's kind of a bummer um you know it does a decent enough job of replicating the helmet of the original 1990 airborne but it's not, not quite right. And you might be thinking, like, okay, well, if the club is creating this from scratch, they're paying somebody to sculpt this guy's head, why wouldn't it look exactly like the 1991? And the reason for is the same thing I mentioned when talking about Static Line, is that the club was saying, we got to reuse this head. If we're going to put the money into creating this head, we have to try and make it as uh, kind of generic as possible. So we don't want it to look exactly like airborne because then it will look like we've just stuck airborne's head in another character so it's kind of a little more general it's a guy with a helmet with some goggles and they definitely got the reuse out of that they reused it for one of their uh figure subscription service figures so this here is uh, blizzard and then besides the standard blizzard we also got a tiger force version of blizzard that they reused it again and then we also got the uh the gi joe character scoop in another one of their figure subscription services. So again, all these characters in the original G.I. Joe line in the 80s and 90s, 
They all had unique head sculpts, and all the, they had similar helmets, maybe, but their helmets were all removable. Uh, now, unfortunately, all three of these guys share the exact same head. The helmets are stuck on, and uh, it's kind of a bummer. I don't really care about Airborne. I didn't have this character when I was a kid. And I honestly don't care that much about Scoop. But Blizzard was a favorite of mine when I was a kid. I had this figure, and I don't think this head really looks like Blizzard to me. So it's definitely kind of a bummer that they reused it for him. I wish he had his own unique head with a removable helmet, but uh, what are you going to do? All right, so let's go back to talking about Airborne. So he's got a pretty uh, pretty cool color scheme. He's not nearly as bland as some of the other guys. And his kind of gray, you know, there's different tones of gray, and there's some silver. Like the paint used on his shoulder pads almost looks like it could be the same paint they used on the display base. So he looks really good on that silver base. It really ties together nicely. It's a nice looking figure. Um, one thing that uh, I don't think you really notice by just looking at it, but uh, this head, I don't know if it's the hole they they uh, made, but anyway, the neck is like a real pencil neck. And it looks kind of odd. You can see that the paint doesn't quite line up like underneath his chin there, the flesh tone paint. So that's only if you're being really nitpicky and kind of getting up close. But I find this head on all the figures, I think it's probably even worse on Blizzard, is that he's got a real pencil neck and it's almost like inhuman looking. So that's a minor gripe. Otherwise, I like the uh, the paint. Accessories wise, so you see he's got his machine gun. He's got this satchel with the uh, Sky Patrol logo on there, which is pretty cool. And then he's got a parachute pack similar to what we saw with Airwave. So again, it's kind of a bummer that not everybody gets a jetpack, but at least the two guys that don't have jetpacks, they both have parachutes that ties them together. So there is some uh, you know, cohesion in the design of the team. And overall, yeah, I think he's pretty cool. So there you go. That is uh, Airborne Robert 6 version 2. Next up, we have Altitude version 2. Now, before I get into talking about this figure, I just want to quickly say... Um, you guys don't realize this, but I've been gone for 24 hours. I just stopped shooting the video, put it down for a day, and come back. Uh, while I was gone, I did some of the editing on the first half of the video. I added some of the, uh, the reference photos and stuff like that. And I don't usually do this, but I figure I should probably shout out the websites that I use for the references. Sometimes it's obvious because I leave the like watermarks on the photos. But typically... When I want to show images of older G.I. Joe figures, I either go to yojo.com, which is a great reference site, or I will use uh, General Joe's uh, website, which is a review and a news site. Um, it's run by this guy, Justin. Uh, it's a great site. I've been going there for like 20 years almost. Um, but today, I actually found neither of those sites were really providing me with very good reference photos for the 1990 Sky Patrol figures. So a lot of those photos I've taken from another website called Joe Battle Lines, which is run by this guy, Fred. So uh, I don't know any of these dudes, but I visit their sites regularly. I hope they don't mind me using their photos for reference, but they're just, uh, you know, they, they put together really good sites with a lot of good reference photos. So I thought I should shout those guys out right quick. Um, also, I noticed this video is running kind of long, so I'm going to try and speed up talking about each of the figures from here on out. So here we go. Altitude version 2. So the first version was released in 1990, and that one they took um, a full, a, a pre-existing body and put a new head on it, but uh, they used a G.I. Joe body instead of a Cobra Trooper. So they took Slipstream, who was a G.I. Joe pilot, and they put a brand new head on him, and that's how they created Altitude back in 1990. So this time around, we do have a Slipstream in the modern era, and he's right here. Now, they didn't just reuse his body. I'm not sure why. They could have, but they, they didn't. In fact, I don't think they share any parts whatsoever. So we can get rid of Slipstream here. Um, so for uh, Altitude, what he's made up of is some different Rise of Cobra parts from Duke and from Firefly. The arms, uh, you might notice he's got that familiar kind of checkered shoulder pattern that we just pointed out on airborne so those come from uh, lift ticket yet again so they're using the same same arms there and then the head is the most distinguishing piece so underneath this weird helmet 
And this helmet, it's actually two separate pieces, I believe. Yeah, so you've got the, the helmet, which is just kind of a little standard helmet. And then you've got this weird see-through visor, which is, uh, I don't know, it looks like a welder's helmet. I don't know if that's something that, uh, you know, the army really, really wears when they're skydiving and things of that nature. But that's, that's what he's got. Anyway, the head here. Now, it might not be immediately recognizable. It's, it's a good face. It's really good sculpt. I like that kind of attitude in there. He's got his ears pierced. Um, a lot of detail in the hair. So that head comes from Mercer. So this is a character who uh, used to be a Cobra Viper. You can see on his arm, he's got that tattoo with the Cobra logo scratched out. So this is one of Sergeant Slaughter's Renegades. So they reused that head. And they look quite a bit different, because not only is the, the hair color different, but the skin tone is quite different too. So, you might not notice it at a glance. So, I really don't mind when they reuse heads when they do this much of a difference. Change the hair color, change the skin tone, because, yeah, you wouldn't look at these two guys on a shelf and think that they were identical twins or clones or something. So, overall, the build for Altitude looks pretty good. I like his colors. Like, again, it doesn't seem too outlandish. The orange and the green and the gold. Um, well, I don't know. It's, it's a little outlandish. The gold kind of maybe takes it out of the real world military. But uh, otherwise, you know, it's not like blue or pink or anything. So it's it's not too bad. I like the look of the outfit. And the pieces come together pretty well. You know, he doesn't necessarily look like he's a mishmash of three or four other figures. Uh, for accessories. So he's got a green machine gun. He's got a knife. The knife actually has... A silver paint app on the blade and green handle. It's always nice when they go the extra mile and do that because oftentimes G.I. Joe weapons are just molded in a single color. Uh, he's got the helmet and the faceplate, which I already showed you. And on the back, he's got the same parachute that we've seen on two of the other figures already. So this is the last member of Sky Patrol from the box set. So as you can see, three of them got jetpacks and three of them got parachutes. So... There you go. I think that's all I have to say about Altitude. So now we're going to take a look at the first Cobra character from the box set. So this is Sky Creeper, and this is version 2. Now, unlike all of the other six figures I just showed you, who first appeared in 1990 under the sub-team Sky Patrol, this guy actually came out the following year, in 1991, and he was in a similar sub-team, except they were known as the Air Commandos. And each of the Air Commandos figures released in 1991, they came with a glider. So they were all similar to Sky Patrol in that they were like air-based characters. And yeah, so that's where we first got Sky Creeper. And this is the first time we've seen him since then. So he's kind of a bizarre looking character. His helmet is pretty unique. When we turn him around here, you'll see how it's got this very kind of unique design. And uh, this was a brand new head created by the Collector's Club. So that's always nice to see. Uh, I'm almost surprised they didn't reuse the same head that they did for Airborne for Sky Creeper. It would have lacked that distinctive kind of scoop or swoop, however you want to describe that. Um, but you can see how it's kind of similar if I bring Airborne back out here. You know, considering how the club likes to uh, kind of cut corners and save money where they could, um, I definitely could have seen them reusing the same uh, head, but they didn't, thankfully. So, uh, yeah, there you go. There's Sky Creeper. So other than the new head, he's a mix of existing parts. Um, he's got some Snake Eyes parts. Uh, his arms, you see with those big gloves, those are from a Cobra Commander figure. For accessories, he's got a little blue Uzi there. And now for a backpack, so he's got a different type of glider. So rather than the jetpacks that the Sky Patrol guys have, he's got... This, which is closer to a glider, which I guess, you know, is a good homage to the 1990 figure. So you press this button on the back, and those arms jet out, and then you've got this cloth uh, thing here. And there's little clips that don't work so well, but you clip those onto his ankles. Like so. Yeah, they don't seem to want to do it very well. So yeah, you can clip both of these on his ankles. And, you know, one of them already came undone while I was hooking the other one up. But the idea being, I suppose, if he jumped off of a cliff or jumped out of an airplane, he would spread his limbs and, you know, this whole thing would spread out and he could he could glide. So it, it works pretty well, the mechanism and all that. But, yeah, they just don't clip onto his ankles very well. 
and it's faint but you can see the uh, air commandos logo which is the cobra logo with some wings so you can see that on the back there so that's pretty cool so i do like this backpack i like that it's different than the gi joe ones and uh, yeah i like this character um partly because he's just so weird like he's not particularly cool the bike the uh, the helmet kind of looks like a, a bicycle helmet um and if anything i would expect if you had showed me this guy i would expect him to be a good guy just because he doesn't look very menacing and his colors are kind of bright um but yeah he is a cobra and yeah i think he comes together pretty well this is another one of my favorite figures from the set just because he's something uh, a little different so yeah there you go that's sky creeper version two next up we've got another one of the cobra characters this is flying scorpion now this is technically flying scorpion version one so there is no previous version from the 90s to show you of this character um, but he's not a newly created character uh, what he is um, he's something the club has done a bunch of times is where they take some foreign figure that was only released in some other country and then they make the first official hasbro release because a lot of those like uh repaints from foreign countries weren't official characters and hasbro's like gi joe lore so back in 1990 um in brazil you could get this figure which was made up of different parts he his body was some recoil parts and some scoop parts but the most recognizable reused part was the head because the head has that big scar over the eye um, and so this head was originally sculpted for cesspool. So the 1990 um, Flying Scorpion figure, they reused cesspool's head, except they repainted it black, so he was African-American. Um, so they looked different. However, that scar was pretty distinguishable. So it did just kind of look like an African-American version of cesspool. Um, but anyway, I don't have that figure because, like I said, he was only released in Brazil. He's very hard to find. He wasn't actually called Flying Scorpion. That's kind of the translation of his name. In Brazil, he was known as, and I'm probably going to butcher this, but it was El Escorpio Vodor, I believe, which should translate into Flying Scorpion. Um, anyway, so this is the first time we're ever getting him in uh, North America. And yeah, he's pretty cool. I, I, I'm always really stoked when uh, Hasbro does these foreign releases of figures. Yeah, so I think this figure turned out really great, and I'm really happy to add a new character to my G.I. Joe collection that I never had before. So this figure here has a reused cesspool head. Um, we actually got cesspool in the figure subscription service um, maybe a year, a year or two prior. So here is the cesspool figure. And you can see he's got that big ugly scar right across his face, you know, pretty much right from his hairline all the way down to his chin. It's pretty, pretty gnarly. Yeah. So that's the kind of head um, the figure subscription service or sorry, the collector's club did invest money to create this new head But you'd kind of think like they can't reuse that head. That's way too uh, Distinct to be used for another character, but they pretty brilliantly found another way to do it by giving us the first ever American version of flying scorpion and He doesn't share any of the other same parts. Let me bring Seth cool back out here for a sec so I think this version here, they did a pretty good job of recreating the vintage cesspool with the parts they used here. But uh, over here, they created a whole new body using some other parts. Um, his torso is the Lifeline torso. Now, Lifeline had a couple of extra pouches and stuff on the front. And I don't know if you can see it here, but they actually removed the pouches. So there's like a little indent hole there where they had to take a pouch off of the original Lifeline body. Um, and that's so they could fit this silver web gear which i think originally belonged to a cobra officer so it's lifeline's body with a cobra officer web gear and it's also got some retaliation uh, duke arms and legs but it all comes together pretty nice and makes for a really striking looking figure i really like the red and the gray and the black uh, it looks really cool so i'm really happy to have this guy um, for accessories he's got a gray machine gun pretty standard gi joe stuff and he has got a backpack now, uh, this is different than both what Sky Creeper had and what all the G.I. Joe characters had. It's amazing how many different little uh, jetpacks exist in the uh, modern G.I. Joe line. And I forgot to mention with Sky Creeper, but his, uh, his glider pack, that originally came um, with a 
character called like the Dark Ninja. That was part of the G.I. Joe Retaliation line in 2013. So that's where this was reused from. But meanwhile, uh, this part here, this came from the Pursuit of Cobra line. And I've actually already showed it to you. I've got so many figures laying here now. It's kind of difficult for me to grab somebody on the sidelines here. But let's bring out this uh, this skydive again from Pursuit of Cobra. So this is where we first got this backpack with the kind of vulture looking wings. So that's what they've reused here for Flying Scorpion. And I think it looks really really uh, really cool. It works really well with him. I like the fact that you know the Joes have their own distinct jetpacks, and then the Cobras have their own distinct jetpacks in this set. So you hit the button, the wings launch out. He's got some uh, little missiles here on the side. You got one on each side. And yeah, he's really cool. I dig this guy. Now you might have noticed I'm having a little trouble with him on his display base as well. He's not as bad as uh, Skydive there. He, but it's not great. These backpacks really do make it difficult for them to maintain their balance. So in my display, I often have these guys on the back of my shelf just so the uh look he's falling apart all over the place here but just so that they can lean back on the back of the shelf because yeah they, they will topple over otherwise these backpacks add quite a bit of weight anyway so there you go there's a uh, flying scorpion before i move on i have one last thing to mention about flying scorpion i'm doing a horrible job in this video i keep uh forgetting to tell you something like with sky creeper i forgot to mention his backpack until later I screwed up naming the parts on one of the characters earlier. Anyway, the only thing I wanted to mention with Flying Scorpion is that he also has uh, another accessory that I forgot to show you. Now, normally, if a character has an extra pistol or an extra knife, I don't feel you guys are missing out on any really important information if you don't know about that. But uh, Scorpion actually did have a full helmet, which to me is a pretty important accessory. Um, I actually don't have it out and about. But with Cesspool here, he came with this alternate... Like, well, with a helmet that you can put on over his whole head. So it's got the full visor that covers the whole face. So his is golden orange, which matches up with his outfit. So uh, Flying Scorpion had the exact same helmet, except it was, uh, I think it was black helmet with a gray visor, or maybe vice versa. But anyway, it's a pretty cool helmet. So if you'd rather display him like that and cover up that big nasty scar, you can do that as well. Next up, we have another unique character, very much like the Flying Scorpion. This guy is known as Black Vulture, and this is version one of him, but he is not a brand new character. This, again, is a Brazilian character that's being done officially by Hasbro for the very first time. So, also in 1990, similar to Flying Scorpion, this guy was released, um, but in Brazil he was known as, and again, I'll probably butcher this, but it's Abutre Negro which I guess means Black Vulture. And the original figure in Brazil was made up of cesspool parts, Maverick parts, and he had the head of DJ from Battle Force 2000. Now, when the club made this figure in 2016, there was no modern DJ for them to use DJ's head. So they had to uh, work with uh, completely different parts to try and recreate this character. So he's made up of a couple of different parts. Uh, I believe he's got some beach head legs on him here with that little uh, kind of little distinct, I don't know what that is supposed to be, a little keypad. So he's got that on his side. The arms, I believe, belong to a snake eyes. Now the torso, that's uh, pretty recognizable. The torso belongs to the accelerator suits that we saw on both Duke and Ripcord figures from the first live action movie, The Rise of Cobra. So this here is the uh, Marlon Wayne's ripcord in his accelerator suit. But yeah, you can recognize that uh, that torso piece there, both the upper and lower torso, that's all from the accelerator suit. Now for a head, um, the following year, the Collector's Club actually did a Battle Force, Battle Force 2000 convention set, and they made a DJ figure. And since it was the first DJ in the modern era, they actually put some tooling dollars towards creating a new head for DJ. So here's the figure we got the following year with this brand new head. And if the club had done these sets in reverse order, I'm sure that Black Vulture 
would just have a repainted version of this head. But since this figure didn't exist yet, that's not what we got. But I think this head works pretty well, and you can see the similarities in its style, so I don't think it makes necessarily a huge difference. But uh, where this head comes from is from a Cobra Trooper. Um, and this was from the cartoon Renegades. So here's the Cobra Trooper. Now, I actually have him displayed with a different head. This figure came with two different heads. So it's got this one with the blue mask covering his mouth and nose. But then it also had the exact same head, but without the mask, with his exposed mouth and nose showing. Now, I didn't like that look as much, so I kind of threw that extra head in my spare parts bin and have displayed him this way. But the club used that other version of the head, and that's how they created him. So you can see how similar these are the helmet style and everything like that. So that's where this, this head comes from. It's the alternate head from this character. And I think it comes together to create a pretty cool character. I like Black Vulture quite a bit. The, uh, the black, the silver, the red, you know, it looks very Cobra and he looks very kind of like techy. and yeah, looks cool. Now you see here, he's got a silver like machine gun in his hands. Now he actually has, he came with, the same jetpack as Flying Scorpion here. So this is again the, the jetpack that originally came with Skydive. Um, now the problem is this jetpack, it was in a different color too. It was I think black base with silver wings. That would not stay in his back for the life of me. This is one of the problems when they start mixing and matching parts. Maybe they didn't test it enough when they planned it, but they just probably assumed that, oh, we'll use this backpack with both of the Cobra commanders in this set and they'll tie them together. But they must have forgot to test to see if the peg on this thing here was long enough to go into the accelerator suit body and it just would not stay in. I could probably show you here. Um, let's see if I put this. Yeah, like it is just not deep enough with these two pieces here. It kind of pushes back against the backpack and it's just, it barely, just barely rests in there and so it it falls off so that really sucks that's the kind of thing that uh, you know i display this guy with his wings and for a guy called night vulture you'd kind of want him to have or black vulture you'd want to you want him to have his wings but like if you look at him funny and this, and this backpack will fall off so that's kind of a bummer i wish they had maybe took the time to invest to maybe extend the the peg on this so it would work on that back so that's why i don't have his jetpack here it was a really cool piece for him, and maybe if you were to use some glue or some stick tack or something, you could maybe get that to stick to him. So it's kind of a bummer because he looks a little incomplete without the wings. But uh, that aside, I think he's a pretty cool figure. Now, in every single one of these box sets that the G.I. Joe Collectors Club put together for the conventions, they always had at least one army builder. Uh, some years they had a whole bunch the very first year that they did a box set with the modern uh, style construction, they did a Crimson Viper set. And I think there was maybe three unique characters in that set. And then the other 12 figures were all identical red Vipers. Um, similarly, when they did the Battle Force 2000 set, they did the six members of Battle Force 2000. And then the other nine figures in the set were all identical bats. Um, it can be a little frustrating, but at least they do it with characters that are supposed to be troopers. And some people really like getting multiples of troopers. Most Joe fans don't like when you only get one. So for example, in this particular set, they gave us three air devils, which makes sense because air devils are just a trooper type. There would be multiple guys wearing this outfit. And if this happened to be your favorite trooper and you wanted to build a little army of them, a little squadron, it would be very difficult if there was only one of these guys in each of these box sets because I guarantee you they would be in the most high demand and people would be selling these guys for like 250 bucks a piece and you would you know go broke trying to build a small army of them so you could look at it as kind of you know it's kind of cheap that they stick multiple characters that are identical in the same box set but some people really appreciate it I'm kind of somewhere in the middle I don't necessarily need a big squadron of every uh, trooper type if they had given me more unique characters, I probably would have preferred that. But uh, I totally understand why they do give us multiple troopers, and I'm pretty happy with them, especially when it's a trooper as cool as this. I like this guy a lot. So uh, the original 
Air Devil came out in 1992. So that was the second year of the Air Commandos figures. He came packaged with a glider. Um, and I believe he was all new parts. I don't have the original Air Devil. My little brother did. And I thought he was a cool character. But one thing that was a little different about him, it's always a little weird when Cobra Troopers have exposed faces. It's just not something that you saw very often. They usually had full face masks. And I remember the Air Devil had an exposed face. Um, so this time around, I'm not sure why they went this route, but they decided not to give him uh, an exposed face. And I think it looks uh, pretty cool. I actually probably prefer this over if, they, if we could see his mouth and nose there. I think it's a pretty cool look. So as far as uh, what this guy is made out of, he's got a jungle viper torso and the legs, and then he's got a pursuit of cobra alley viper arms. And the head actually comes from a pretty unusual place. You might not think so, but this head is actually a reuse from Duke. And it's not a reuse of some cobra trooper. Yeah, so there was a Duke figure as part of the uh, movie line, and it had an alternate head. So... I have him displayed with his exposed Duke face, and I actually put this this full goggled, you know, helmeted face that's in my spare parts bin. I actually like it quite a bit for a trooper, but it just didn't suit Duke. Um, we have seen this part used again. So here's the G.I. Joe character sightline, and again, you'll see that same mask. So when you look at these... These characters, it almost looks like he probably has a Cobra logo on his helmet, but it's really not. It's just a kind of a little triangle design, you know, so it's not a Cobra on there. So you can use his head for Joes or Cobras. And uh, yeah, I think it works for either one. I think Sightline looks really cool, and so do these Air Devils. So yeah, the red, the black, and the silver, you know, it's very kind of striking look. It suits Cobra. He actually matches up pretty well with the... Uh, with the Strato Viper here, they've got some good colors that match up pretty nice. And yeah, so what else can I say about these guys? They all have, uh, so they're all the same, but you can see here he's, they've got uh, a gun in their hand. They've got a little knife that actually comes out of the sheath on their arms. So that's pretty cool. They've got a little pistol uh, holstered on their ankle. They've got the same glider that we saw with Sky Creeper. So you hit the button, pops open. You've got the Air Commandos logo on the back. You've got the little clips on the ankles that don't stay on very well. You can see this guy, I've got one of them clipped on. The other one's just kind of dangling. This guy here actually has both. They seem to be holding in place okay for him. Uh, and this guy here, you might have also noticed, he had an extra piece on. He's got this glass visor. It's the same piece that we saw with Altitude. Oops. So it just sits on top of the helmet there, and it works the same with these guys. So all three of them came with one of these. I just don't particularly like them. I think they kind of diminish the look of the figure. So I've chosen to display them without the visor, except I figured, you know what? I might as well display one of the three guys with the visor since they gave it to me. So this is how they look on my shelf. I've got one guy with the visor on, two without. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty cool trooper. Uh, he's a nice addition to my Cobra army. And uh, there you go. So that's the Air Devil version 2. So lastly, we're going to take a look at the other trooper in the box set. So this is the Cobra Night Vulture. So these guys have retroactively been made the, uh, the henchmen of Black Vulture. In the original line, they didn't really have a, you know, a squad commander. But now Black Vulture fits the bill. So this is the only figure in this entire set that I actually own the uh, vintage version that I can bring out here to show you. So here is the original Night Vulture that was released as part of the Air Commandos in uh, 1991. So you can see he's purple and black. He's got the orange like, kind of highlights. It's an interesting design. And my little brother had this figure as well when I was growing up. And I would have sworn that that head with those big goggles was a repaint of this Snake Eyes figure, which I think came out the same year. But you see, he's got those big, kind of, I would say, oversized red goggles. 
And uh, I thought for sure, growing up, when I looked at this figure, I thought they just repainted this head to reuse for that figure. But I actually just learned when I was putting this video together that this is an entirely new head. And you can see, he's, you can kind of see his mouth and nose in this figure. Whereas this figure, he's clearly got the uh, just little breathing holes. So they're similar, but they are not the same. So this figure here, when he was originally introduced back in 1991, he was made with brand new parts. Wasn't reused from any other characters. And I don't have any of his accessories, but uh, he would have come with, you know, I'm sure he came with guns and all the other stuff, but he came with a glider as well. So let's get rid of him and we'll take a look at this new version. So he is also purple and black with the orange web gear. And this is another problem with modern Joes. Um, you can see how this is supposed to clip together, those two little pegs go in that little hole. But you get this a lot where it doesn't really work out. Like it'll rest in there, but I'm sure that'll pop open again in a few minutes. But oftentimes the web gear doesn't quite work. You can see how high it sits on his shoulders. You know, it's not as snug as you'd like it to. So, you know, oftentimes it works okay on the original figure, but when you reuse the parts and you use a vest from one figure and put it on the body of another one, you run into issues like this where it doesn't quite fasten or it doesn't quite sit right. And that can be kind of frustrating considering the price you're paying for these figures. But uh, overall, look, it's already popped open again. But yeah, he looks pretty good. And this head here, uh, again, it, it looks like a snake eyes head. Like you'll see this one here. He's got the breathing holes. It's not, uh, you can't see his mouth and nose. So I'm sure you would probably assume that this was a repainted uh, snake eyes head, but it was not. It's actually reused from a Cobra Trooper from Retaliation. So this here, Cobra Trooper with the removable helmet. So this is actually the head that they have reused for the, uh, the Night Vultures here. So otherwise, they are made up of a, kind of a mixed bag of parts. Um, he's got snake eyes, bodies. Um, and you know what? I think the, the vest comes from a different character, but actually I think the whole body is from a snake eyes, according to my notes here. So yeah, the legs, the arms, and the torso. So it's a snake eyes body with a cobra trooper head and then a vest from somewhere else. And then the glider. So they've got the same glider that came with the Air Devils and with Sky Creeper, just again in a different paint deco that matches the character. So it's purple and black. You hit the button, flies open, you get the Air Commandos logo. And uh, there you go. These guys are pretty cool. So I've got a nice little squad of three of those. So this is the only other version that exists. This is version two, the original from 1991. And yeah, I think that's all I have to say about Night Vulture. Okay, so lastly, we're going to talk about the figures that were not included in the box set. So when I paid for that box set as a non-attendee, um, I did not have the same opportunity to purchase any of these other figures that I'm about to talk about uh, online in advance. I had no way of guaranteeing my figure. So this was, every year, it was kind of exciting and kind of stressful when the convention would roll around because ever since 2012, I did pre-order a box set of figures. So I always had that kind of locked down and I knew I would get that. Eventually, the Collector's Club would mail me out my set. Sometimes it would take maybe even a couple of months, but I would get my set and that was guaranteed. But I never knew what other figures were gonna be available at the con. Nobody did until literally that weekend. So they'd usually reveal the figures on the Thursday or Friday and then they would go on sale on the Saturday. And me and everybody else would be scrambling to buy them on eBay. Um, and it's really hard to know because sometimes figures would sell it really quick and then you would never have another chance at them. Other figures people would put up on eBay for really high prices and people wouldn't buy them and then they would drop in price later. But if it was a figure you really wanted, you kind of, you didn't know what to do. Should I wait or should I pay the crazy prices? And there, you never knew how many things they were going to reveal. Some years it was a lot. This year it was quite a lot. And I didn't happen to get nearly as much stuff as I would have liked. So these two figures that you see here, Freefall and the Hello Viper, these are the only two additional figures that I got from the 2016 convention. But I'm just going to quickly talk about the things I did not get. So there's often some vehicles that are released. Vehicles are pretty expensive, and it's not something that I really care to collect. 
Um, I don't have any of my vintage vehicles on display. I try to avoid buying vehicles when I can. I usually only do buy them when I want the figure that's included with them. So at this particular convention, they had a repaint of the G.I. Joe Sky Striker jet, um, which is one of the larger Joe vehicles. I don't remember what it originally retailed for, but I'm sure it was, you know, probably, you know, a hundred bucks or so at least at the convention. And then if I were to try and hunt it down on eBay, I'd be at least looking at 150, if not, you know, 200 or something. And it's really not something that interested me, although it had kind of a nice chrome uh, look to it because all of the uh, kind of Sky Patrol vehicles back in the, the 90s were chrome. They were like chromed versions of previous previously released vehicles. Um, so that's kind of why they went with this theme of chromed vehicles and chrome display bases. So yeah, so there was a Sky Striker that I did not get. There was another vehicle, the Sky Sweeper, that I did not get. There was a pack of jetpacks. Um, and it was a mix of G.I. Joe and Cobra jetpacks. I did not get those. Um, there was a, another vehicle, the Cobra Hydra. Now this one, it's the first one that came with a figure. It included the Aero Viper version 3. Now I would have liked to get this. Even if I didn't get the, the Hydra, I actually wouldn't care if I got the Hydra, but I would like to get that Aero Viper version 3. Um, however, it's not a character I have a ton of uh, history with, or really any history with. The original one came out in 1989. Um, I didn't have it because it was a vehicle driver, and I wasn't buying many vehicles um, that late into the game. Um, so yeah, I don't have an Arrow Viper, and yeah, so it's a shame I didn't get him, but most people were selling him with the Hydra, and it just kind of priced him out for me. Um, then there was a two-pack of G.I. Joe characters Cloudburst and Skymate. Now, I did want these guys. They actually look kind of goofy as far as characters go. Um, I didn't have the original ones. The original Cloudburst and Skymate were both released in 1991. They were part of the Air Commandos set. So that subset, Air Commandos, that included G.I. Joe and Cobra characters. And both of them came with gliders back in 91. So these new versions came in a two-pack together, and they both included gliders. So even though I would have loved to get these figures, and I might still someday, every now and again I do check eBay to see if I can find a good price. If anybody watching this has them and is willing to part with them at a good price, maybe let me know in the comments below. But uh, at the time, it was just a little bit too expensive for me because people would obviously be selling them as a pair and with the gliders. So it was a little expensive, and I just didn't pull the trigger on them back then. Uh, lastly... There was a figure of a character called Air Raid, and this was basically a brand new character. Um, there was another character with the name Air Raid, but that was actually just a renamed Airborne. Again, it's a little bit confusing with some of these like naming things, but Air Raid is basically, he was a new African-American character. Um, he would have been really cool to get. I liked the look of him. He was the figure that all attendees actually get for free. Um, so you'd think he might be reasonably priced, but he wasn't, he was kind of expensive. So I never pulled the trigger on him. Maybe if he was a character that I had some nostalgic history with, I would have paid some bigger bucks for him. But because he's a new character, I didn't really feel the need to drop a ton of coin on him. And uh, yes, yeah, so that brings us to what I did get. So every year they would do a three pack of Cobra Troopers. So similarly to the box set, how you've got three Air Devils and three Night Vultures. So they would take another type of Cobra Trooper and release them in three packs. So you get three identical figures. Now, I have gotten the Cobra Trooper, I think, from every year, but I have never once paid for the whole three-pack. Um, sure, it would be cool to have a little squad of these guys, but as I mentioned earlier, it's not super important to me to do that, as long as I have one of them on my shelf. And so with the case of the Heli Viper here, I uh, you can usually find somebody on eBay that's breaking up the set. You usually pay more than you, you know, like you would save money technically if you bought the three-pack, because let's just say... You know, if you bought the three pack, it was a hundred bucks. But if you bought the individual figure, it was like fifty bucks. So if you ended up buying three of them individually, you're paying you know one hundred and fifty bucks instead of a hundred. But uh, yeah, the Heli Viper here is not a character that I particularly love. I definitely didn't need three of these guys. Like he looks pretty cool, but this head is taken from the Cobra Snow Serpent, just like the original. Uh, the, the original Heli Viper was released in nineteen ninety two. He came with a battle copter, which was like a sort of little vehicle. So this guy has this helicopter backpack that was originally released with a Cobra Commander figure. 
So it, uh, you know, it makes sense that the Hello Viper would come with a little helicopter blade. So that's pretty cool. You press this button here, and the uh, the blade spins around. Um, otherwise, he's got. I think his whole body belongs to the Cobra Night Viper, and then he's got the Snow Serpent head. So the Snow Serpent head to me is really distinct. When I see that, I think Snow Serpent. So it doesn't really work for me for any other trooper type. That's how I felt about this guy when I first saw the vintage one, and that's how I feel about him now. It's kind of weird seeing a Snow Serpent head in this color scheme and with this body. Uh, overall, I think this is this is kind of a fun figure, but he is pretty goofy looking. And then lastly, we've got Freefall. So this is a GI Joe paratrooper. This is version two. The only other version, the original, was released in 1990. Now that is the same year as Sky Patrol, and this guy is a Sky-based character, but he was not released as part of the Sky Patrol subset. He was just a regular G.I. Joe character. So reused parts, um, but it does a really good job of recreating the original Free Fall from 1990. I really like the look of this figure. It's simple, but he's like realistic. He's militaristic. He's got a nice uh, green machine gun. He's got the knife, again, with the green hilt and the silver blade, which is always nice. He's got this kind of elaborate web gear, which is a parachute. I've got the things all tucked in the back here like this, but otherwise you can pull those out. And then you can see you could, you could hook them up to one of the many parachutes that these guys have come with. Um, and actually, at the convention... This figure was the parachute drop figure. That's something they do at the convention every year where they have somebody go up on the roof of the building and they take an exclusive figure and attach them to a parachute and throw them off of the building and people have to run and scramble to get them. So yeah, that's how, uh, if you had attended the con, that's how you would get this one. Uh, and I got it from somebody on eBay. Now as for the helmet, uh, I think this originally appeared on Blowtorch um, in the modern line. It's the same helmet they used on Ripcord, the other G.I. Joe uh, paratrooper and if you pop this head off the head the helmet and the mask are separate pieces although that really does not want to come off of there it's on there pretty good but the head it does a pretty good job of recreating the original head of freefall so it's blonde short hair um, this is a head that we've seen a bunch of times similar to that head of dusty's that got reused a dozen times this head i think originally belonged to airborne and it's been reused for sneak peek and I don't know a bunch of other characters. Anyway, I think this is the only character that has blonde hair that uses this head, so it looks pretty good with him. Plus, most people are going to display him with that helmet and the mask, so you would never really know what he looks like under here anyway. So there you go. There's Free Fall and there's Hella Viper. I hope I said everything I wanted to say. I was kind of just scrambling my way through this thing. Um, I apologize if I misspoke or misidentified any parts. Please don't be too brutal to me in the comments for things like that. Okay, so that was my review of the G.I. Joe 2016 convention box set, Sky Patrol. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I still have a couple of these box sets that I haven't yet done videos for, so maybe I'll get to those eventually. It seems to me I have some people that enjoy these type of videos, so if, if you did enjoy this, please uh, hit that like button. Maybe subscribe to the channel. Uh, I appreciate everybody that leaves me comments below. It's nice to chat G.I. Joes with you guys. So, uh, yeah, by all means, do all that stuff down there. And uh, I'm not sure what my next video will be. Maybe it'll be another one of these. Um, I was talking to one of my uh, my buddies about doing a video on uh, Transformers Siege figures that I'm hoping to uh, have him on as a co-host um, problem is he's on the other side of the world. So uh, me and Argo will try and work that out for you. I'm not sure if that'll be the next video or not. But um, regardless, I'll be back soon. Um, if by some chance I don't see you before the holidays, please have a happy holiday. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Ciao.